Welcome back everyone to another tips and tricks session. I have Josef back with me and today we're going to talk about T24, the fast pack that gets you inside and observability into Temenos. Now I'm not the expert, but Josef is. Josef, servus. Servus, Andi, grüße dich. Wie geht es dir? Ah, sehr good. Uh, I think we'll stick to English because uh, that will benefit <laughs> most of our viewers. Um, Josef, uh, you've been doing a lot of performance uh, optimization and observability for T24. Can you quickly fill us in what T24 is and why we think what we show today is important for many of our viewers? Absolutely. Thank you so much, Andy, for this session. So T24 Terminos is a, a worldwide core banking system. Uh, it's like a framework approach. You can easily customize it to your need. Uh, you can install it on-premise. You can use it in cloud. And yeah, we have as a business more than 10 years experience in terms of performance engineering, tuning this T24 system for better throughput, better reliability. And yeah, today I'm happy to share a few tips and tricks how everyone that is using Dynatrace and is considering using it for T24 observability could do a better job, could provide a better observability for their banks. Perfect. And uh, I see you've created a launch pad with all the relevant details yeah. in one spot. Uh, Josef, maybe just walk us through some of the things uh, that uh, you have built over the years and some of the best practices. Cool. Very good. So Launchpad is a handy feature, especially if you deal with business uh, uh, people, they can easily find the navigation. So as you can see in this Launchpad, uh, I integrated parts of our fastback. Actually, the most crucial element for T24 is the close of business processing, because mm -hmm. you can imagine when your banks close in the evening, there is a lot of day end processing going on. This is called close of business and it must be completed within the night hours. So mm -hmm. to make sure that you can open the bank next morning again, this close of business monitoring is really mission critical and you need to do everything that you are aware of performance issues, performance challenges during this close of business processing. Mm -hmm. And actually this is one of our first elements that I want to quickly highlight mm -hmm. here in the fast pack. So by just clicking on this button, I will see immediately what is my close of business process uh, doing. So this was the last hour in this environment. It took four to, to two, six uh, hours. So everything is perfectly fine. The close of business processing, as you can see here, was started at 8 p.m. in the evening. It was done around midnight. So the banking team for sure had a good sleep till mm -hmm. next morning the bank was starting up. Actually, on this environment, we tweaked close of business from 12 hours down to around four hours. So a mm. big success. And it was only possible because of the close of business monitoring insights that we get through Dynatrace. So a fantastic success story. And uh, also the core banking team, uh, they told us uh, Thanks to you guys, we were finally able to get a much better sleep at night because mm -hmm. we know exactly what is close of business doing. It's a bunch of batch jobs that are started and you can imagine there can be conflicts, there can be long running requests and you need to understand what's going on. Mm -hmm. So we see here on this cockpit, actually the duration of the last close of business processing, we see the historic trend for the last uh, two weeks, we see when the close of business has been started. And if we scroll down, we see how many services are running currently. So even during the day, there are always background jobs in these core banking systems. They simply process the incoming payments and everything that is related to a core banking system. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine when you execute the payment on your mobile phone, this goes to the core banking platform and will be processed behind the scenes. So a user should not feel any pains, any slowdowns, mm -hmm. but the close of business and the entire core banking backend system should even process these payments during the day, for instance, as well. Mm -hmm. And 
as mentioned before, there are a bunch of jobs in a, a core banking environment. These are all background jobs. They are running behind the scenes. They can be easily configured in something like a workload profile, but as you can imagine, there can be mistakes. So mm -hmm. jobs could get stuck. Uh, jobs could, you know, sometimes a job is running during close of business who is not intended to run. And definitely our visibility and observability uh, fast pack is providing you insights to what is going on in your current close of business processing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think um, if I got this right, as you said, right, the Temenos platform is a platform, obviously, that can be configured with many different settings, I guess. And it's right. really about identifying the right configuration to really operate as expected and then getting the right visibility on what is running, what is not running, what gets stuck is exactly right. what you need to then optimize in these particular areas. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, so it's a big customization usually for every bank. Mm -hmm. They have usually their existing online banking and so-called satellite systems. And mm -hmm. it, they need to fine tune the core banking system to make sure that it is running in a best throughput, best response time for their particular needs. So mm -hmm. this is absolutely a lot of fine tuning. And mm -hmm. as you can see here also, it's important that we monitor the database CPU memory utilization, just to make sure that this is also not becoming a bottleneck. Mm -hmm. Here you can see a bunch of services that are running uh, currently. And if, if we go further down, uh, we can see what are the messaging layer doing. So there is something like uh, online and uh, offline message queues. The online message queues are most important. There should be not, you know, huge peaks. They should be immediately processed just to make sure that your core banking system is running in a good shape mm -hmm. and uh, processing the requests accordingly. Mm -hmm. Uh, we have also uh, log analytics turned on on this platform. So sometimes you're really curious what is going on in your logs. So Dynatrace is really doing a fantastic job to easily pinpoint even error messages that are only visual in logs. So we created this customized dashboard. If I zoom in here in the last 24 hours, there is a bunch of uh, Grail DQL queries behind mm -hmm. the scenes so that we can easily filter the relevant logs and visualize them to the operators. The, the challenge is uh, we talk about the distributed environments. Uh, many machines are involved in a T24 uh, core banking environment, and it's much easier if we can use Dynatrace to mm -hmm. bring these logs to our core banking operators extend ex yeah. attention actually yeah cool yeah, it's a great way to centralize have, have all the relevant data in a single dashboard Correct. Um, and it's great that you're using a uh, login chest here um, is there um, because I saw you earlier you had your seven days now you switch back to 24 yeah. you had some 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 charts on the top that gives you also an, an overview of Correct. Uh, you know how many logs are coming in I guess how many errors you have. So it's it's really cool. Everything based on logs. Yeah, it's based on logs. Yeah, I believe it's you know a fantastic instrument. Sometimes uh, you know logs still provide a lot of evidence that is important for developers to get a better understanding, mm -hmm. and especially for these highly distributed uh, environments, it's an awesome feature to have everything in a single cockpit and to mm -hmm. see exactly during this, you know, time critical close of business processing mm -hmm. is, you know, something blocking my processing. Here, for instance, alerts, this would be the highest severity. At the moment, we don't have any alerts, but as a Temenos operator, core banking uh, business operator, <laughs> you mm -hmm. really uh, need to watch these alerts mm -hmm. and you need to drill down and see uh, to troubleshoot and fix this alert. So for instance, this was the, the financial crime management system that was causing some exceptions. And yeah, it's crucial absolutely to remediate and mm -hmm. remove these issues quickly during close of business as well. Yeah. 
And then, you know, the metric is obviously nice on the dashboard, but you can also then have Dynatrace alert you because, yeah. folks, everything you see here, as you said, it's not just something you can put on a dashboard. You can create problems. You can then alert on problems uh, by creating tickets or notifying people for different means. Yeah. Very cool. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So let me go one step further. Mm -hmm. uh, as I mentioned before, there is a bunch of background jobs uh, going on during close of business. And mm -hmm. for sure, as performance engineers, we are interested in tuning these uh, batch jobs, background jobs. So these TSA agents, they all have for sure response times. And we want to pinpoint what are you know, the long running uh, requests also to some kind of trending and figure out, you know, today versus yesterday versus last week, was there any deviation and what is going on behind the scenes? Mm -hmm. So uh, in this environment, I believe there are something like 250 of these batch jobs. Mm -hmm. uh, usually if you don't use Dynatrace, you need to deal with log file analysis. This is a big nightmare because it's so time consuming, mm -hmm. uh, you can almost not uh, tweak the system. Since we integrated the Dynatrace platform in this environment, uh, within a very short time of a few months, we optimized the system dramatically, actually down from 12 hours uh, to four hours from mm -hmm. a test uh, COB duration perspective. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hey, remind me again, TSA stands for what? It's not Transportation Security Authority? No, no, no. <laughs> Terminal Service Agents. So these are the, the batches that are running behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. uh, they have different purpose for sure. It's like, you know, there's this workload profile where you specify who need to do what. And then this agent will simply in the background pick up the work. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's a little bit like consumer producer. They are mm -hmm. taking care of the background activities and processing all the tasks behind the scenes. Like, you know, uh, if there is a mortgage payment, make sure that this is booked to the right account, yeah. for instance. Yeah. This is something that a, a background job, a TSA agent would take care of it. Right. Cool. Then for sure, we see average statistics. We see how many of these services are running and uh, a few more details. Mm -hmm. uh, this was about the TSA. And there's one concept of lock manager. Uh, imagine there are a few hundred uh, background jobs going on and they all for sure need to store and read data from a database and process very similar uh, logs. Uh, in Terminos, we have a concept of log manager. It's simply responsible for locking some record to make mm -hmm. sure that no one else will modify this record during a write operation. So mm -hmm. this log manager is highly configurable. So you can decide how many instances will be available. And Definitely the visualization helps a lot to make sure uh, what is the parallel locking situation mm -hmm. doing. So we see here, are there any lock weights? Uh, how many lock counts mm -hmm. uh, are available and how many lock releases are at the moment available? Mm -hmm. You want to avoid this huge blue uh, peaks where you have too many weight events because yeah. they could really slow down your COB and your entire platform. Mm -hmm. Okay. And even here, the, the lock collision count. So uh, mm -hmm. this is uh, crucial for any core banking operator. They want to see it in real time. They want to do historic analysis so that they can quickly figure out, are we going in the right direction mm -hmm. or is there any big, big challenge over there mm -hmm. as well? And this is all based on metrics, I would assume, and not logs, yeah? Yeah, it's all based on metrics, correct. So mm -hmm. we developed a fast pack with 10 year experience on the Temenos platform and we know Dynatrace results very well. So we combined these two knowledge areas to mm -hmm. create something like a fast pack to allow our uh, Temenos customers a easy, you know, uh, use of the Dynatrace platform as well and create really visibility to all areas that are relevant for Terminals observabilities as well. Mm -hmm. And because you mentioned uh, the term fastback multiple times now, it's basically a bundle of Dynatrace configuration, yeah. whether it's dashboards 
or configuration of uh, what yes. metrics to additionally pull in here. Yeah. Nice. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Correct. And one more topic is for sure you can do a drill down to many areas. So in Dynatrace, we have this awesome concept of traces. Now also uh, the, the traces on grails and the spans. Mm -hmm. uh, we use the concept of request attribute. It's there for a long time already. Mm -hmm. And we can definitely uh, bring in or pull out all the relevant information from the core banking system. So what matters is, imagine your core banking frontend is used by thousands of tellers uh, in your country or around the world. Sometimes they experience performance issues. They will raise a ticket and you as the operator need to find out what is this user actually doing? You know, what is his pain point? Mm -hmm. and the observability in Dynatrace, thanks to this user tagging and the concept of request attribute, is allowing us a very fine-grained filtering. So for instance, we could easily pull out uh, at the moment what are the ongoing core banking processes, what is their response time, or even further, we can identify users and mm -hmm. what are you know they doing at the moment? Mm -hmm. And then we can go down to all the details. At the moment, the system is quite fast, uh, but for sure there will be peak events, uh, maybe at the end of the month, where some users are suffering a little, and then we can definitely identify what are these user requests that have been executed and maybe what are the bottlenecks as well uh, and how to remediate these issues. Mm -hmm. Cool. And uh, the two of us, we did another video just a couple uh, of days ago on uh, distributed trace and analy analytics, where you also showed uh, other yes. dashboards that were based on traces. So uh, clearly we all love our traces and the, you know, the analytics we can do on top of them. Very good. It's a very powerful solution. So we use Dynatrace in all our uh, Temenos observability projects. Mm -hmm. uh, it simply provides a fantastic return on investment. Usually within a few months, you definitely have hundreds of performance findings you can easily uh, optimize together with yeah. your teams. Yeah. Wow. And mm -hmm. uh, so you mentioned, Josef, uh, you have been doing this obviously for years. If people are interested in learning more about this, some of the dashboards, some of the insights, the best practices, folks, uh, I guess just leave a comment here or uh, reach out to Josef. Uh, you are available on the Dynatrice community, I know. I'm sure also on other yes. channels on social media. Um, yeah, thank you so much. Anything else you want to say as parting words? I believe performance and observability is really important. Make sure that this will become like a feature for your products. So it's a continuous investment, but I believe it provides a fantastic value uh, midterm and long term if you make it a continuous effort. So thanks, Andy. It was a pleasure talking to you. Same here. Thank you and see you soon. Bye bye. See you soon. Take care. Bye bye.